So I wanted to learn how QR codes work, so I made a QR code generator. Let me show you how. QR codes store data as a 2D grid of black and white modules, where black represents 1 and white 0. The grid size depends on the QR code version, starting at 21 by 21 for version 1 and increasing by 4 modules per side up to 177 by 177 for version 40. For this project, I focus on version 1. To start, I generate a 21 by 21 grid filled with random black and white modules. I gradually refine it into a proper QR code as I implement the encoding rules. Next, I created a class to convert the random grid into an image. It allows me to specify the module size in pixels, making it easy to scale the QR code for display. I set the module size to 20 pixels. Every QR code begins with a signature feature, the finder patterns. These are the iconic squares in three corners that help scanners determine the orientation. For example, if the QR code is rotated, the scanner can easily reorient the image. To create a finder pattern, I generated a 7x7 black square, placed a 5x5 white square inside it, and added a 3x3 black square at the center. These patterns are positioned in the top left, top right and bottom left corners. With this step, the QR code is already starting to take shape. Next, each finder pattern needs a one module white white space around it. I made this by adjusting the finder pattern code to first create a 9x9 white square, making sure it surrounds the pattern. To prevent errors, I also added checks to handle any issues with out of bounds positions. From this point on, instead of initializing the QR code with random values, I initialize the modules to zero. Then every QR code has timing patterns. These consist of alternating black and white modules between the finder patterns, helping to identify the position of rows and columns. There is a single black module near the bottom left finder pattern that is always black. Before adding any data to the QR code, I need to find the empty spaces. To do this, I'll create a reserved mask to mark the spaces that are already used. I also need to save space for the format information, even though I haven't added it yet. Its place is marked with yellow on the image. Here is what the reserved mask looks like. At this stage, there are 208 empty modules left, equivalent to 26 bytes of data. These bytes are divided into two categories, data bytes and error correction bytes. Every QR code includes error correction to ensure it remains readable even if part of the code is damaged. There are four error correction levels, each with different storage capacities and damage recovery properties. I'll use the low error correction level, which allows the most data to be stored, but offers the least protection against damage. Now it's time to put data into the QR code. I created a class to convert text into a list of bits suitable for the QR code. Here is how it works. Let's say I want to encode the text QR. First, I need to choose an encoding mode. I'll use byte encoding because it's the simplest to implement. The first four bits represent the encoding mode. The next 8 bits represent the number of characters in the text. Each character is then converted into its 8-bit representation. Once the text is encoded, the data needs to be padded to the required length. Padding works as follows. Add 4 0 bits if space allows. Add 0 bits to align the data to the next byte. Finally, Alternate between two specific byte values until the data bits are completely filled. Let's insert the data bits into the QR code. 
The placement of data follows a unique zigzag pattern, which might seem unusual at first. Starting from the bottom right corner, the bits are placed vertically in pairs of columns, moving upward. Once the top is reached, the pattern shifts to the next pair of columns to the left and continues downward. This zigzag motion alternates until all three positions are filled. To identify the three positions, I use the reserved mask generated earlier, ensuring that the data bits don't override critical areas like finder patterns, separators or timing patterns. With this method, I systematically filled the remaining spaces with the data bits generated in the previous step. The remaining bits in the QR code are allocated for error correction. QR codes use read Solomon error correction. By appending extra bits to the data bits, the scanner can recover missing or damaged data. For version 1 QR codes with low error correction level, 7 bytes of error correction are added to the data bits. To generate these extra bytes, I'm using the read solo library. Every QR code must use one of eight predefined mask patterns. In modules where the mask evaluates to true, the module's value is flipped. A good QR code generator typically creates all possible QR codes with the eight different mask patterns, evaluates them using a readability metric and selects the best one. For simplicity, I use the mask pattern that inverts every third column. It's important to note that masking applies only to the data bits and the error correction bits. As I mentioned previously, I reserve space for the format information. This is the step where I fill it. The format information consists of 15 bits. The first two bits represent the error correction level. 1 1 indicates the low error correction level. The next three bits represent the mask pattern used. 111 corresponds to the mask pattern I used. The remaining 10 bits I dedicated only to error correction for the previous 5 bits. Additionally, because it's very important, the 15 bits of format information are placed in two different locations within the QR code. And that's it, we've successfully built a QR code generator from scratch. Now let's put it to the test. I scan the QR code with my phone. And there it is, it works perfectly. Let's try another one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.